Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanic and we have here behind me a Citroen C4 Cactus I had to think about that but yeah, it's got a 1.6 or 1.5 engine I don't even know yet, I don't know what year it is it's got a private plate on it but a uh, complaint is it's got a message on the dash particle filter clogged and it has had people looking at it I don't know what they've done but we're going to get inside we'll look at the fault codes and we'll look at the live data and we'll see if we can resolve what's going on so the customer has been watching my videos so he knows I use the launch UK stuff and he has said to me he did use a bottle of that which did fix the problem for a couple of hundred miles but the lights back on and he's come down from Brighton hopefully we can get a more long-term solution yeah sorry it's not on a private plate it's a 16 reg Okay, I'm going to use this ThinkScan 689BT again. I've been using this because um, a few people have been asking me to use it on a few more cars. Yeah, so I showed this on a, like a review video, but obviously a review video is just showing you one time of the tool. So I've been trying to use it just to show other people various uses of it on different vehicles and what it can do. Um, pretty much most of the stuff I'm doing is, is exactly the same. So I'm not doing mixtures of different types of work. I'm, it's usually always emissions related stuff. So in that sense um, there is some of the stuff I don't use like I had people asking me questions about the TPMS stuff and uh, will it work with a, a launch battery tester I will try and find that soon and if I can I'll make a video on it but I'll put the link where you can buy this in the video description with a 10% discount okay so I've just ran a fault code we have I'm gonna ignore these but we've got particle filter detected overloaded I've got some other stuff here about the touch screen of the hair, whatever you call it, display system. We're not worried about that, so we're going to go to the engine system. And then we have data stream here, exhaust information to this one. And then we're going to click all of these items. A little bit of a lag there, delay. Average distance between the last 10 regenerations 144 miles, which is a bit, a bit more, um, a bit more than you'd like to see. It's regening more often than you'd like to see. Basically, usually you'd like to see that sort of at least 300 miles to five or 600 miles. Uh, but again, it depends on where it's driven. This car has only done 50,000 miles. It's obviously used in a city. Um, which doesn't do a lot of long long journeys. Uh, average distance travelled since the particle filter was last changed to 500 miles. So someone's obviously been telling it it's had new stuff. Particle filter pressure is 30 millibars at idle, so we got quite a block DPF. Last time it regened was only three miles ago, and we've still got a block DPF. So what may be the case, I'm not really happy with these numbers and I'm not really confident that a clean is going to fix this either because it's regen 3 miles ago and we've still got 30 millibars of pressure on the DPF. We should only have somewhere between 2 to 6 but we've still got a highly blocked DPF and it has regen recently. So there's nothing that's stopping or inhibiting the regen from taking place. So we haven't got a, a separate fault basically, we've just got a straightforward block DPF which is more concerning usually if you've got a block DPF there's a reason behind it but in this case there isn't apart from maybe it's been driven around town maybe it's been forced regen which may have damaged the DPF if he's had a block DPF I know it I know it has been regen but someone's been looking at it and it's probably been told that it's got pat fluid in there when it hasn't pat fluid would run out sort of 50,000 miles normally, but if it's been driven around town, this car is mm, nine, nearly 10 years old. So, if you're driving around town, it could only last sort of 20 to 30,000 miles the path fluid. It's quite expensive to get that filled up as well. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to take off the path fluid tank, refill that. We're going to attempt to clean the DPF. I'm just going to hope that if we clean it, we can get it down. Um, I can't guarantee that a DPF clean is going to work. Uh, some people ask me, you know, what's the warranty on your DPF cleans? 
it's a clean I haven't replaced you know your DPF if I replace your DPF and it fails in a couple of months then yeah fair enough we'll try and get a replacement DPF um, from whoever supplied it but in terms of cleaning if I clean your DPF and three months later you know you've got a black DPF again um, because of how you've been driving or you you know I had a, some customer recently bring me back one Vivaro oh we've got this check injection you just cleaned it in November which is only three months ago um, so I said yeah let's bring it back and have a look see what's going on plug it in he's got a an EGR valve issue um, and that is what caused his DPF to block again unfortunately with some certain vehicles you will get repetitive issues because not because of the DPF but elsewhere in the vehicle um, and it's like to me it's like me taking my car to a, a valeter uh, having it cleaned parking it under some trees for a week and then say look oh you've cleaned this a few days ago now it's dirty again what's going on so if it if it came clean when you cleaned it and it's getting blocked again afterwards there's obviously another issue then nine times out of ten it would be maybe glow plugs EGR or whatever in this case I'm not 100% confident so obviously I'd say to the customer if we're going to clean this we can't guarantee how well it's going to work or how long it's going to last you might have a damaged DPF but after the clean I will have a lot better idea if the DPF is salvageable okay so the first thing I've noticed is we don't have a DPF pressure sensor here where it normally is on these type of engines so I'm going to assume that's the catalyst and the DPF is under the car so we're going to get it up and have a look underneath okay we've got the vehicle raised up Okay, here is the DPF under the car. So the first thing I'm doing with this is taking off this pipe because these have a tendency to block up and even though you can clean out the DPF, this is blocked up and so the pipe. Well, let's get the pipe off and confirm it, but the pipe is likely to be blocked and even if you clean the DPF, you won't get a good reading because the pipe is also blocked upwards okay so I've got a gauge on that just connected to it like that surprisingly it's not really blocked it's partially blocked but it's not holding pressure but we're gonna clean it out anyway this is the section here where it gets blocked up and this is the best way to clean them get heat on it heat will dissolve soot burn it out bit of a blast of air you can see the sparks coming out so there is a lot of soot in there that is burned ash now coming out so a little bit more heat and another, another blast out just compressed air just to make sure it's all out so you can actually see that this was the worst part here it's fully blocked this little section so you wouldn't get the right millibars of reading cleared out now okay now we've got our DPF cleaning holes connected to that same pipe it's fitted back to the car here compressor set we get it sprayed in just confirmed that we haven't got any leaks anywhere so again as usual that's just the DPF cleaning fluid that we're using compressor at 120 psi push it in it is quite noisy this compressor so I hope you can hear what I'm saying here is the Eli's tank or pad flow tank whichever you like to call it I have managed to disconnect the filling tube on the vehicle so I didn't need to remove the tank now we're just going to do a gravity fill of this fluid into the tank so these hold 1.6 litres but you can you can get 2 litre bottles in there just over 2 litres it will hold 1.6 is what you should fill it to now what I mean by that is if you put two litres in and you tell the car that the pad fluid tank has been filled it will only register 1.6 or 1600 millilitres. Okay everything is now back together, I'm going to get in the car, back in the diag machine, test drive, look at live data and see how we've done. Okay we'll hold the revs up and see how far down we can get this pressure. 
So what I'm going to do now actually is just to get it working we're going to do the filling of the additive tank, additive reservoir or pouch, this one. So we're just holding the RPM, we don't have a speedometer here so we're just keeping track of it on the tool here see how far down we can get this pressure hopefully we can get this down to sort of 40 millibars at 3000 rpm would be nice now the car will be smoking for around about five minutes okay so roughly a minute later we are down to 48 millibars, 45, and idle we have one millibar, so that's perfect. Now I did have my doubts about this because if it's been regenning and the DPF was still blocked, but again, like I said, the pipe is a big issue on these. Um, you can get false readings even from the pipe. Maybe what I should have done, taking it back, I maybe should have cleared the pipe, got back in, started and had a look at the pressure after that, but we've just done the complete job anyway. Um, when the pipe is partially blocked like that, what can happen is the entrance of the pipe is blocked, so the hole is sort of closed over. You will get pressure go in there when the engine is running, but then further up the pipe it holds the pressure, so as you let go of the revs it doesn't sort of release the pressure, so it will build up pressure in the pipe. Okay, so live data is looking good. We have programmed in the pet fluid tank to say that it's been filled up. So if we go back here, we should have something. Oh, it jump back up to six millibars. We give that a little bit of a rev. There is quite a delay on this computer. Seems to be. See, you see, it's when you rev it, let go. It sort of t takes a couple of seconds. I don't know if it's the diagnostic machine or is it just this, this car. I haven't noticed that before. On the other cars I'm working on with this tool, uh, we'll need to find where the additive level is just to say that it's been filled. There we are. Let's see, it's a bit of a there's a bit of a delay on it. Okay, amount of additive says it's 1.2 mil, 1.2 liters. Sorry milliliters, 1100 milliliters okay okay so short test drive has been done irrelevant but I will say these cars with an auto gearbox are absolutely horrible to drive chucks you around um, other than that car is fixed pressure is down to it's hovering between 1 to 6 millibars depending on how the computer feels we sort of rev it and it comes down to one again um but yeah we're basically done so that is it and i'll see you on our next video